We're getting the recording. All right. Here we are. Three o'clock. Time for some dynamics. Let's rock and roll. A couple of announcements. Number one, unless you've been hiding under a rock, uh, you'll notice that our first exam is this upcoming Friday. Uh, I did email you guys uh, an attachment sort of describing uh, sort of the process uh, and instructions for exam number one. Uh, please review that document. If you've got any issues with what I've got laid out there, please email me and let me know um, what's going on. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to make it as easy as I can for you guys. So I'm going to post the exam on Blackboard as soon as 3 p.m. rolls around. Have your paper in front of you ready to go. As soon as you get the exam, you can start writing on your paper. Once you're done, take a picture of it, scan it, whatever, email it to me. That's it. All right. Should be pretty straightforward. Um, Please take a look at that document if you have it. Next, homework number two is due to my mailbox by 3 o'clock tomorrow. So please get that done. I have office hours tomorrow from 8 to 10 in the morning, central time, if you have questions. All right, so any questions, please come see me or ask me about it. Uh, make sure that you're looking at the most recently uploaded homework document because I did change some of the... Um, negative positive signs on uh, some of the problems there. So make sure that you're looking at the most recent homework if you have questions about negative positive sign convention, that sort of stuff. All right, so that's it. Uh, I'll wait a second here if anybody has any uh, questions they want to pop up in the chat. Uh, otherwise, sort of the topic for today is we're going to be expanding our discussion about relative velocity and relative acceleration equations to three dimensions. All right, we're getting crazy. We're going to, to 3D, All right? So I will pause just a second here, make sure we don't have any comments. No one's saying anything like, your microphone is off, I'm good. All right. So if we don't have any comments, uh, then I'm going to dive in onto the material. Uh, I will share my screen here and I will share what is a new set of lecture notes that I have uploaded to Blackboard, and this should be sort of like um, lecture number three for you guys. Whoa, get back here. Okay, so today I want to expand what we've been talking about in 2D and move it into 3D. So we've derived equations for relative velocities of a rigid body and relative accelerations of two points on a rigid body and i want to move that discussion now to 3d so buckle up are you guys ready here come the equations for three-dimensional kinematics of a rigid body bam all right they are the same okay so when we did the derivation for relative velocity and relative acceleration equations we did it generally in 3d Though we've really been looking at two dimensional problems up to this point, both for your homework and the examples that we've done. The equations that we derived relating velocities and accelerations of two points on a rigid body to each other generally hold for three dimensions as well. Okay. We might have a little bit more complication in that you might have, let's say, an angular acceleration vector that has components in both x, y, and z. You have an angular velocity vector that might have components in x, y, and z instead of just, you know, k hat which we've sort of had so far so you might have some additional complication that sort of comes up but the general equation to execute these relative velocity and relative acceleration problems is the same okay so i'll just make a couple comments here about um, some things that you might have to watch out for in 3d and then we'll do some example problems in 3d and uh, that'll sort of be it for today. I will make a note here that I will not have 3D problems on any of the exams in the class, so you're not going to be responsible for 3D uh, material in this particular class, but I do like going through at least uh, one day of 3D problems so that you can sort of see what things look like in 3D, which is generally how you would see things in the real world anyway. Um, what things sort of look like in 3D and Sometimes this lecture kind of helps people put into place uh, angular velocity and uh, sort of what it looks like in, in reality. OK, so let's talk about some things you might have to watch out for in 3D. Um, so in 3D, you may see angular velocity represented by the variable omega, capital omega, instead of lowercase omega. That's common for some textbooks. Um, and you might also see the angular acceleration as capital alpha instead of this lowercase alpha. 
All right. So I'll stick to lowercase omega and lowercase alpha for 2D or 3D. Uh, I don't really see the need to make a designation, but just giving you a heads up that some textbooks and some people do make that distinction. All right. Also, you may need to define for yourself a unit vector for your rotation. So you might not necessarily have the angular velocity and angular acceleration aligned with one of your axes of your problem. So what I mean by that is maybe you have an angular velocity that's along some unit vector lambda that's not necessarily one of the principal directions like I, J, or K. All right, so you may need to define some unit vector. And all this stuff here is just kind of reminding you how you might want to define a unit vector in space between two different points. All right, so that's kind of all this stuff down here. More or less a review of how to make unit vectors that you that you maybe saw in statics. All right, so that's kind of it for expanding from 2D to 3D. Um, pretty straightforward, uh, except we're just going to see a little bit more complication when it comes to actually using the vector algebra uh, in the equations above. So I'm going to start now uh, in the example problems with uh, actually example number two in this deck. Uh, I think example number two is just a little bit easier to work through first. So we'll work through this particular example. Here we have a, a pinwheel that has got a ball and socket joint at location O. Uh, and we're going to say here that this pinwheel is welded to a shaft at B, and this entire assembly is free to rotate about a ball and socket at O. So if we're given a constant angular velocity, Remember that word, constant angular velocity, that'll come back later, of this particular assembly of here is our angular velocity of this guy now given in components of i, j, and k. So here we have an angular velocity vector that is sort of three-dimensional. We want to determine the velocity and acceleration of point A. All right, so if you're copying this down, I'll maybe give you, uh, I don't know, I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can sort of see things. I'll give you maybe 60 seconds to sort of copy this down while I transfer the information for this problem over to my writing pad over here. Cue elevator music. So I'll pivot you guys over here uh, to my whiteboard. I'll pivot you friends style. All right, pivot. Okay, so we all should, all should be able to sort of see the whiteboard here now. Uh, and I've sort of copied the relevant information over here that we have this pinwheel that's sort of uh, uh, fixed at this sort of location here O. Uh, it's free to move about this ball and socket, but generally point O is restricted. Uh, and we're told that the angular velocity of this entire assembly, remember this is all one rigid body, so all points on this body have the same angular velocity, uh, given by these rectangular components, and we're told that it is constant. All right? So, dang, my dog just barked. She's getting, getting excited over there. All right. Uh, so our angular velocity here is constant, and we're asked to determine the velocity of A and the acceleration of A, which is over here on the structure. All right, so here we've got to use our uh, relative velocity equations. Okay, so we're going to start with velocity analysis. And usually this is the best place to start. And for this velocity analysis, we need, we need to relate the velocity of two different points on the body. And we're interested in the velocity at A, so that'll be one of our points. 
now we need some other reference point to work off of. Uh, well, from this picture, uh, it's kind of obvious to tell here that point O is going to be a point of interest to us. And that's mostly because it's held fixed in this ball and socket. And so because of that, at point O, the velocity at O and the acceleration at O are both zero. Okay, that's because this particular point doesn't move in any linear fashion. Okay, it's fixed at that location. Think about it as like, you know, how the gear kind of is fixed about some bottom point as it sort of pivots around. It's the same idea is that in three dimensional space, it's sort of locked in the bottom there and it might be like moving around with this sort of crazy swivel, but generally that particular point is not moving. All right, so for our velocity analysis, we're gonna use our relative velocity equation, which is kind of this equation that we've known to come and love. And that is that the velocity at point A on our structure is the velocity at point O plus the angular velocity of our structure crossed with the position vector locating A from O. Hopefully this is burned into your equation, memory banks at this point. Uh, if not, you know, what are you doing? All right. As we said before, velocity of zero, uh, velocity of point O is gonna be zero because this particular point is fixed and we're interested in the velocity of a. So we need to uh, define this particular guy here, this position vector locating a from o. Uh, this omega we're given, so that's okay. We already have this, and we need to define what is this position vector locating a from o. So if we come back up to our picture here, uh, maybe we'll use our picture to help define that position vector. So if we want the position vector locating a from o, we want the position vector that arrives at a from o. So that is this particular vector here. So this is the position vector arriving at a from o. Fortunately for us, uh, the problem kind of gives us dimensions of this pinwheel already. So we can see here, it's going to be pretty easy to define this position vector locating a from o in rectangular coordinates. And that in the i direction, we're going to kind of have to go backwards 160 millimeters here. In the J direction, we're going to have to go up 120 millimeters. And in the Z direction, to get from O to A, we're going to have to move forward in 80 millimeters in K hat. All right. So let's go ahead now and work our way through this. All right. So here we have the velocity of A which is sort of our unknown in this particular problem, is going to be the velocity of O, which we know is zero, plus the angular velocity of this particular piece, which is 1.5 i hat. This is given to us in the problem. Minus 3.5 j hat minus 3.0 k hat. This is radians per second, crossed with my position vector locating A from O which is going to be backwards 160 millimeters in I plus 120 millimeters in J plus finally um, 80 millimeters in K. And I'll squeeze the millimeters in here just barely. All right, so this cross product is three dimensional. Uh, so do it whatever way you want. If you have some cross product solver on your calculator, fine. Uh, if you want to do it the traditional way where you sort of like write it out in this sort of like matrix form, this is sort of how I like to do it, where we have like the I direction, the J direction, the K direction. This is sort of the Dr. Hart method that I was taught many years ago. Yikes. I don't even want to say how long ago. Uh, here we have omega cross r, so we have 1.5, negative 3.5, and negative 3.0 radians per second. And we're going to cross this with our position. This is negative 160 millimeters in i, 120 millimeters in j, 80 millimeters in k. All right, so hopefully you sort of like seen this method before, um, or you have your own cross product method for working in three dimensions. Uh, and so we add up these guys as we go down into the right, add up these guys as we go down into the right, add up these guys as we go down into the right, uh, and then subtract when we go down into the left, down into the left, down to the left. So hopefully you've all kind of like seen this general method. And if you work through this and you calculate this cross product, you should end up with something like uh, I made a stray mark here. 
you'd end up with the velocity of point A here being 80 I hat plus 360 J hat minus 380 K hat. Here are units of millimeters per second. All right. So here's the velocity of A. If you wanted to sort of try to draw this on your pinwheel to sort of look at like what the direction of the velocity might be, maybe you could do that. Uh, so we have some small component in I, some pretty large component in J, and some negative component in K. So if you wanted to sort of look at what this velocity might look like, okay, we have some small component in I, some large component in J, and some negative component in K. So positive X, so some small positive value this way. We have a positive in Y, so very strong positive here, and we have some negative in uh, Z. So this would sort of be like uh, the rectangular components of our velocity. And if we put this all together, maybe it looks something like this, the velocity of point A. It's kind of this very strange looking velocity. All right. Not in any particular XY plane, XZ plane or anything like that. It just kind of got its, its very strange um, random orientation. So let's continue. That was your velocity of A. Uh, now we'll continue with uh, what would be the acceleration analysis for this particular point. Again, we're going to utilize the fact that point O is fixed and is not going anywhere. So we need a relative acceleration equation, which relates two points in space. So here, since we're solving for the acceleration at A, let's put that on our left-hand side. It's going to be the acceleration of O plus the angular acceleration of our piece crossed with the position vector locating A from O plus our centripetal term, which is the angular velocity vector crossed with the angular velocity vector crossed with the position vector locating A from O. Right. So again, just going over again and again, burning these vector equations into your head, burning them, burning them, burning them in. Let's go ahead and define some of these things. We know the acceleration of point O, since it's fixed, is equal to zero. One other thing that we're also going to note here is that since we're told our angular velocity vector omega is constant, what do we know then about our angular acceleration vector? I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with hero. Rhymes with uh, Robert De Niro. Okay, okay. Uh, angular velocity is zero. Okay, the derivative of a constant is going to be zero. My doggy's like whining right now. Okay, it's okay, buddy. All right. Since omega is constant, our angular acceleration is zero. That gets rid of this term here entirely. So zero cross anything is zero. And all we're left with is this centripetal term on the right hand side of this equation. So uh, ultimately, the acceleration of point A in this particular problem is going to be omega cross omega cross R. So if you wanted to write this out fully, we know the angular velocity vector from the problem is 1.5 I hat minus 3.5 J hat minus 3 K hat radians per second. This is going to be crossed with Again, the same thing, uh, 1.5 I hat minus 3.5 J hat minus 3 K hat radians per second crossed with the position vector, which locates A from O, which we defined previously, is going to be negative 160 I hat plus 120 J hat plus 80 K hat. This is going to be millimeters. And again, I just squeezed it in. All right. So you'd have to execute sort of this cross product here first. And then once you do that, you can execute the bigger cross product. And if you work through that, you'll end up with the acceleration here. Of point A after the dust settles. 2410 
I hat plus three thirty. J hat plus eight twenty. K hat. This is going to be millimeters per second squared. All right, so not much more to these three-dimensional problems, except just maybe more difficult cross products uh, or understanding that we have sort of three equations, three unknowns is something that might also kind of pop up instead of what we have in 2D, which is typically like two equations, two unknowns kind of things, something like that. All right, how are we doing on this particular problem? Any questions on that guy? I sort of picked this one to start with because I think it's uh, relatively simplistic to start. How are we doing? Questions, questions and comments, questions and comments. All right, no questions. That means everybody understands 100%. No possible errors on the exam on Friday. Yes, that's what I like to see. Okay, so let's continue then, and I want to actually do another example. And this one's a little bit more complicated, uh, a little bit of nuance that you sort of have to work through, uh, and that is the example... We'll go back here to example one from the slides. So I'll pull the slides up again. I'll, I'll, I'll bring you back to the slides. And here's our example one. Now we're going bowling, baby. Here we're told that a bowling ball rolls without slip, which if any of you have been bowling before, you know this is a little bit suspicious. But let's say that it rolls without slip on a horizontal plane. We're given that the velocity of A on this particular ball is some value and the velocity of D on this particular ball is some value. Determine the angular velocity of the bowling ball and the velocity of the center of the ball at point C. These are things that we're interested in looking for. We're also asked to sketch the angular velocity vector. All right, so I'll give you a second here. Again, I'll copy some of the useful information over to the white pad, uh, and we'll work through this example in 3D, which hopefully can sort of help bring home some of the concepts that you might want to think about uh, when you're sort of doing some of the 2D problems, which is a majority of what we do in this class. So again, I'll uh, pull a Ross and I'll pivot you over to our screen. So here now you should have the screen in front of you uh, with all of the sort of pertinent information from the problem copied over. All right, so here we have our bowling ball and we'll say that the radius of this bowling ball is 109 millimeters. Given the velocity of point A on this ball, which is here for this particular problem, and we're also given the velocity of D on the ball, which is this point up here. We're asked to find the angular velocity of this particular ball, which is omega, and the velocity of point C, which is sort of in the center of this ball. All right. We're also asked to uh, sketch the angular velocity vector. It'll sort of help us to understand sort of how, how this ball is spinning. Okay. So let's go through this. Uh, first thing that we want to do is maybe seek some additional information from this problem that is not necessarily stated right in the problem statement. And what I'll say here is that let's notice that ball is in contact with ground at point O. All right. So here the ball is in contact with the ground at point O. And from kind of like the last week's worth of material, we've talked about where two rigid bodies are touching each other. As long as there's no slip between those two particular objects, that, that will, they will share a velocity at that point. 
So if we want to think about on the bowling ball what the velocity at point O might be, we could think about what the velocity of the ground might be. So if we think about what the velocity of the ground is, usually we're taking the ground to have zero velocity. All right. So in this particular instance, we'll say that because of that, the velocity at point O is equal to zero. Therefore, at the location zero on the ball, our velocity is zero. All right, so this is going to be helpful for us, uh, and it sort of helps with our uh, calculation. OK, so we're given the velocity of point A and the velocity of point D. So you might want to straight away just like relate point A to point D. But if it's up to me, I'd rather have one of my terms be zero. OK, that's why I'm kind of like talking about this now. Because I think if I can make one of my terms equal to zero, I can simplify my equations and simplify my math a lot, right? So why not make things simpler, right? Keep it simple, stupid, right? Uh, so let's do that. So notice the ball in contact with the ground at point O. Therefore, we have that the velocity of that point is zero. So now let's use our relative velocity equations. And let's relate the velocity of some point that we know to another velocity of some other point that we know. Because ultimately, we're looking for the angular velocity of the ball. And so if we can write an equation where the angular velocity is the unknown, then we can solve directly. So we might be interested in looking at, let's say, the velocity of point D relative to point O. So in this particular problem, we might velocity of D or velocity of A. Let's go with A. So the velocity of A equal to the velocity of O, which we know is zero, which is going to be helpful for us, plus the angular velocity of the bowling ball crossed with the position vector locating A from O. This is our relative velocity equation. All right. So we know the velocity of A. We know the velocity of O. We can define the position vector locating A from O. The only thing we don't know is this angular velocity vector omega. All right. Well, that's Great, that's what we're looking for. Now let's be careful here in three dimensions and remind ourselves that this is three equations. And how many unknowns do we have here? I'll give you a second to pause the video. Just kidding, this is live. This is three equations and actually will be three unknowns. That's because our angular velocity vector omega is going to be broken up into three components in i, j, and k, which we'll say as wx or omega x i hat plus omega y j hat plus omega z k hat. Since we're in three dimensions, we can't necessarily say that our angular velocity is going to only be contained to k or only be contained to i. We have to sort of leave it general with all three potential directions having some magnitude of rotation, right? So here we have three equations and three unknowns. So these are the three unknowns in our particular equation. Luckily, in three dimensions, our relative velocity equation is three equations, one in i, one in j, one in k. So we can work through this guy and have ultimately what we hope will be three equations and three unknowns. All right, so let's go ahead and execute. So the velocity of A is given to us in the problem. I'm going to write that directly here on the left-hand side. So here the velocity of A is 4.8 in I hat, uh, minus 4.8 in J hat, plus 3.6 K hat. Units here, meters per second. This is going to be equal to the velocity of O, which we know is zero plus the angular velocity, which I'll sort of leave as this uh, unknown expression, omega x plus omega y j plus omega z k. And we're going to cross this with the position vector that locates a from o. So let's go back up to the bowling ball and see if we can figure out what that is. So here, point o and point a. So the position vector that locates a from o is this position vector here. And since we know the radius of the bowling ball, and it's a spherical ball, 
we know that the radius is 109 millimeters, so we'll have to go a positive 109 in X and a positive 109 in Y. Since this is in millimeters, I'm actually going to convert on the fly to meters. So we'll say that this is 0 0.109 I hat plus 0 0.109 J hat, and this is meters. So the reason I convert to meters is because on the left-hand side here, we're working with our velocity in meters per second. So we want to try to be as consistent as we can with the units. And so I'm kind of converting on the fly here to metric meters. All right. Let's go ahead now and look at what happens when we actually go through this. So we're going to end up here uh, with, on the left-hand side, 4.8 I hat minus 4.8 J hat plus 3.6 K hat, all in meters per second. On the right-hand side, after we sort of do some of our cross products, we'll get 0 0.109 omega X K hat minus 0.109 omega y k hat. I'm just kind of working the whole cross product here piecewise, plus 0.109 omega z j hat. And one final component is minus 0.109 omega z i hat. OK. So this is just kind of executing that cross product. I'm just writing it all its full glory. So now we've written our vector equation. Let's actually separate this now into our three directions, i, j, and k. And so let's look at uh, all of these guys separately. Here now, in i hat, uh, it's going to be pretty easy. We'll just take the i hat component from the left side, which is 4.8. And this is all going to be in meters per second. So I'm just going to leave the units off for now. 4.8 here equal to the only I hat component we have on the right hand side is this negative 0.109 omega z. Hey, that's useful. One equation, one unknown. So this allows us to solve for omega z directly, which is one of the components of the angular velocity vector we're looking for. Here, this is going to be negative 44 radians per second. All right, useful. We're making our way downtown. Faces pass and we're homebound. All right. Next. In J hat. Let's go there next. Left hand side, negative 4.8 equals sort of on the right hand side here. Now we have 0.109 omega z. And yikes. All right. We've run into a situation with redundant information. So we solve again for omega z here, and you're going to end up with negative 44 radians per second. And I'll say that this is redundant. Redundant. All right, that's kind of a problem, but let's address that in just a second. Lastly, let's look at k hat. And in k hat, we'll see that we have a 3.6 on the left hand side, and we have two components on the right hand side. That is 0.109 omega x minus 0.109 omega y. All right, so I'll just scroll back up here a little bit so you can see that. Here's my 3.6. Here's my two components that I care about in k hat. All right, now you'll notice here that in k hat, we have one equation and two unknowns. So we can come up with some relation between omega x and omega y, but that's kind of the best that we can do. So if you simplify, you'll end up with the component of the angular velocity in x is going to be 33 plus the component of the angular velocity in the y direction. I'm going to label this as equation star, and I'll say that to solve, we need more info. And this sometimes happens with three-dimensional problems. And it's part of the reason why I sort of selected this particular problem is that sometimes you get redundant information. It just happens, especially when you have a lot of symmetry in a problem. Like we have a lot of symmetry with a bowling ball that happens to be spherical. It has infinite planes of symmetry. All right, so uh, we need a little bit more additional information to solve this problem. Luckily, we have additional information. 
that additional information is that we know the velocity of point D, which we haven't used at all yet. So let's use another velocity relationship. Okay, so we'll use one more relationship here, and that will bring in information about the velocity of point D. So we'll say that the velocity of D here is, and we'll use the velocity of O because we know that that velocity of zero plus omega cross the position vector which locates D from O. Just do it. All right. Go ahead with this. The velocity of D given in the problem. 9.6 I hat plus 7.2 K hat. This is meters per second. Equal to the velocity of O, which we know is zero since we're at the ground. So this is zero. Plus my angular velocity, I'll kind of keep it general for now. This is omega X I hat plus omega Y J hat plus omega Z K hat crossed with my position vector that locates D from O. So I'll give you a second here if you're still working through this, but the position vector that locates D from O, if we're gonna go scroll up to our bowling ball here, so the position vector that locates D from O is here. We can see that this is our position vector locating D from O. And we see to get to D from O, we had to go two times the radius. So this will be 109 times 2, or 218 millimeters in the positive k hat. So I'll convert to meters on the fly and say that this is 0.218 j hat meters. Okay. So you could work through this cross product and um, sort of look in a variety of different directions, but we really only need to look at bringing in one additional equation to solve this problem. And so to do that, I'll uh, actually grab some information from the k hat direction. So uh, let's look in k hat. So on the left hand side, 7.2 meters per second. Can it be equal to if I do my cross product to reveal k hat, I'm going to use I uh, cross J to get me some k hat component. So I cross J will get me positive K. So this will be 0.218 omega X. And this allows me just directly to solve for omega X, which in this particular problem is gonna be 33 radians per second. All right, so this is another component that we have solved for. And let's bring back, so we can plug into our previous equation star to find omega y. So I'll just sort of remind you that we did have this relationship previously between the x and y components of the angular velocity. And so we'll remind ourselves that that equation was that omega x is 33 plus omega y. So if we actually plug omega x into this equation, you'll see that the angular velocity component in the y direction is actually zero, right? So we had to do some workarounds there, kind of play a couple of tricks to, to sort of make our way through that problem. A couple of the tricks that we noticed were pretty much that the velocity at point O is zero, and that sort of helps us work through some of these equations, all right? So altogether, if we wanted to write the angular velocity vector, the component in x is 33 i hat. The component in y is zero. And the component in z is 44 k hat. This is radians per second. All right. So that is the angular velocity vector for this particular piece. One of the things the problem asks us to do is to sketch this angular velocity vector in space. So let's sketch this and see what it looks like. And I'll try to keep the same coordinate system here as much as I can as was laid out in the problem. 
So here we have x, here we have y, here we have z. And so for this angular velocity, we have some component in i and some component in negative z. So if I sort of like bring this uh, back a little bit, uh, my vector is going to sort of be in this xz plane. And here is my vector omega, which is 33i hat minus 44j hat radians per second. So if you wanted to think about how the bowling ball is actually spinning, what the actual angular velocity of this ball is, you would stick your right thumb in the direction of that angular velocity vector and curl your fingers to sort of get a sense for how the ball is spinning in this coordinate system. So it's spinning sort of about that arrow that we just drew um, with some component in X and some component in Z. So it's sort of spinning about that particular axis. So that's sort of how this bowling ball happens to be moving in space at this particular time. We're not quite done. We still need the velocity of point C. Uh, and here now it's rather trivial because we have the angular velocity vector. Uh, so let's go ahead and just execute with that angular velocity vector. And we'll say that the velocity of C is related to the velocity of O, which we know is zero, plus our angular velocity vector omega crossed with the position vector, which locates C from O. All right. So here we have the velocity of C is our angular velocity vector, 33i hat minus 44k hat radians per second crossed with my position vector which locates c from o i scroll way back up here the position vector that locates c from o is sort of like the half height of the bowling ball so it's just going to be 109 millimeters in j so this is point 109 j hat meters and you'll end up with the velocity of c after executing this cross product 4.8 i hat plus 3.6 k hat meters per second. So this is how the center of the bowling ball is moving at this particular time. So it would make sense that our bowling ball doesn't have any velocity in the y direction. The center of our bowling ball should probably maintain like the same distance away from the ground. So it's maintaining that same distance away from XZ, meaning it's not moving up or down at all. So the velocity of point Z, uh, of point C should not have any component in J, which is exactly what we see here. Okay, so our math sort of lines up with what we might physically interpret for this particular problem, which uh, is nice for us. All right, uh, so that's it for today. Uh, reminder, your homework is due to my email inbox by the beginning of lecture tomorrow. I will be around tomorrow for office hours from 8 to 10 a.m. Central Time uh, to answer questions uh, and make sure that you're looking at the most up-to-date version of the homework when you're working through it because some of the uh, negative signs, positive signs have sort of been flipped around, okay? So make sure that you're looking at that. Uh, otherwise, thanks for coming. Uh, I'll stick around for a little bit if people have questions. Um, have a great day. Wash your hands. Stay healthy. All the things. Thanks, Cuddy. I was trying to get some more jokes in there. <laughs> trying to make it a little more upbeat. <laughs> I don't want to see I don't want to see your jokes. Come on. We gotta keep this rated PG. What's brown and rhymes with Snoop? Dr. Dre. <laughs> How about that one? <laughs> uh. Hey, I got a question on. Um, I already turned it in. Um, but I was wondering when you find the the first angular velocity, WAB, or omega AB. Um, 
This is problem one. This is problem three. Problem three. Okay. Oh, the math I did just happened out working, but I don't know if this is how you do it. Was a little suspicious. Yeah. Uh, Michael also has a question about problem three. Is this a similar question, Michael? You can you can unmute yourself. Uh, no, it's it's a little different. It's about um, the acceleration analysis. Okay, maybe let's talk about the velocity analysis first, uh, Alec. If you have a question. Yeah. Um, so I got you know I I broke them into the I and J components. Yeah. Uh -huh. like BBI equals negative six hundred ninety three I. Uh, millimeters of second minus omega AB 62.1 I and then the VBJ equals 400 J hat millimeters of second plus omega AB 231.8 J. I have, a, I have a minus. You have a minus there? So your velocity of B should be uh, the J component should be something like 400 minus 231.8 omega AB. Is, okay. that not, is that not what you have? It's not what I have. What did you have for the I? Uh, so the I hat will be negative 693 minus 62.1 omega AB I hat. Okay. Is that also what you have? Uh, yeah, that's what I had. Okay. And then uh, the second component in J is 400, which comes from the velocity of A. Yes. So you're looking at you're looking at oh yeah, yeah yeah you're looking at link AB right that's the analysis you're talking about yeah so let's make sure that so would have negative I hat plus four hundred J hat is that what you have yep okay so when you're looking at the velocity of B you should have a velocity of A which is negative six ninety three I hat plus four hundred J hat and then your relative velocity should be plus omega AB crossed with the position vector locating B from A. Um, so ultimately, you're going to end up with uh, something like your velocity of B is negative 693 minus 62.1 omega AB I hat, plus your J hat component is 400 minus 231.8 omega AB. That is what you have, or that is not what you have? Uh, the only thing that... I don't have is at the end there the plus. I have a plus omega AB two okay. uh, two thirty one point eight. So let's talk about the position vector that locates B from A. Okay. Okay. You understand that locating B from A requires you to go in the negative I hat. Yes. Correct. In a positive J hat. In a positive J hat. So when you have omega AB K hat crossed with a negative I hat. K cross negative I is negative J. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that indicates that you should have a negative 231.8 omega AB in J hat, not a positive. Yeah. That's is right. that what you have? Um, no, but that makes sense. Okay. So I've answered your question. Um, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I, I didn't really ask it yet. I want to, I wanted to make sure that that was right or at least, um, figure the answer out to that one. Okay, so it sounds like you have a sign error there. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, um, you have three uh, unknowns there, right? Yes. So to solve that, you would have to have another relative velocity yep. equation. So I, I played with the numbers there and i just happened to stumble upon 1.73 okay. and i found that was the answer okay. and so I, I didn't i didn't prove that but i just wanted to so the way that you would have, continue, have an yeah the way you would continue the analysis is to say that the velocity of b that you get from the calculation of link a b which is kind of what we've been discussing so far yeah that velocity can propagate to the link that is link b c so for link BC, you can have an additional equation, which is like the velocity of B is equal to the velocity of C, which is that fixed point at the bottom of link BC, plus the angular velocity of BC crossed with the position vector locating B from C. Okay. You with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So then you write the velocity of B in your link analysis for BC using the unknowns that you had from your analysis of link AB. It's kind of like what you do for the acceleration yes. uh, at the end of this. I did it for that one okay. because I, I, couldn't get, I couldn't get the acceleration just by Playing chance. The numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you just need to bring in another equation, and that's the easiest way to do that, is to propagate the velocity that you calculate from the analysis of link AB into the velocity analysis for the link BC. Got it. Clear on that? Yep. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Is that it? Yeah, for me. Okay. Michael. Thank you. Go. Okay, so quickly for the acceleration analysis. Um, yep. So I'm getting stuck trying to find uh, alpha... A, B, and then alpha, B, C. Okay. Um, I tried doing it by like, so I found um, the acceleration at point A, and then I tried setting up an acceleration, like the relationship at A, B. So I said like, you know, A, B, the acceleration of, you know, acceleration of B equaled the acceleration of A plus alpha, A, B, cross R, B, A, plus, yep. yep. But when I was doing that, I, I was getting an answer but it wasn't right. And so then I tried doing it um, starting like backwards. So starting with um, trying to find the acceleration of B, knowing like that the acceleration of A uh, at, of C is zero. Yep. And then I got that, um, I couldn't get an answer. And so I guess the question I have is, is the acceleration of point B limited only to the I hat direction or uh, is it? No, it's oh, not. Oh, okay. So, uh, so the, the velocity is because of the orientation of the links, but the mm -hmm. acceleration is not. Okay, so I need to do both of those acceleration equations, like the relationships, and then right. to set them equal to each other? Yeah. So, so you can solve for the acceleration of point A just by doing analysis of that first link OA, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you have the acceleration of A handy, just your number, just so I can check? Uh, yeah, I did it in meters per second squared instead of millimeters per second, but I got uh, negative right. negative four point three four seven i hat minus yep. six point seven three j hat. Great. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's good. And you take that to your analysis for link A B. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And so when you get through that, you're going to end up with some acceleration of point B relative to a that's going to have actually three unknowns okay your unknowns okay. are going to be the x component of the acceleration of b the y component of the acceleration of b and the angular acceleration of link a b you agree with that yes okay so you have two equations one in i one in j and you have three unknowns so that's where you're kind of like stuck right that's where you were stuck mm -hmm. yeah so you need additional information that additional information comes from by comes from doing the analysis of the third link which is relating the acceleration of point C, which is that fixed point, to point B, and saying that the acceleration that you found from analyzing link AB, right, this like three unknowns, two equations sort of acceleration, can be related to link BC. Understand? Yeah. The acceleration at point B is shared between those two links. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And so. Once you bring in an, the analysis of link BC, you'll have one more unknown. That's the angular acceleration of BC. But at that, but now you have, you know, four equations, four unknowns, right? Um, acceleration AB, uh, sorry, angular acceleration of AB, angular acceleration of BC, and then the acceleration components of point B. Okay, that makes sense. With me? Yes. Yeah. I know that was a lot. Okay. And Mika's yep. just hanging out, uh, listening to it all. Hell yeah. yeah. It's the, os the osmosis effect. <laughs> no, I had the same question, so I was sticking around to hear it out. Okay, good. Well, hopefully did that clear things up? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, all right well, give it a go, and if uh, you're still struggling, come see, me in my, uh, come see me in my office tomorrow yes. morning, okay? Yes, sir. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, right, thanks thank for you. coming, guys. See you later. Bye -bye. Thank you.